I'm biased. I, uh, I'm a big believer in desal, community-based desalination. I think that's uh, something that will really um, be important for Australia and also globally. And I think Australia could be the global leader there. I'm also very focused on photovoltaics. So those are the two two areas I'm focused on, and I believe will have the most promise. Yeah, look, I mean, if you believe what you're hearing in here, it's all about efficient transport, energy efficiency, and green buildings. So those are areas of key focus, and they've been supported by Obama, etc., um, which is interesting. We are interested in energy efficiency and things that have application to smart business systems and buildings, but in particular, we think around the energy efficiency, things related to smart grid, smart grid applications, um, are going to be the next thing and we also think that there's some niche areas around battery technology that's going to come out. With a lot of innovation happening in that space, there's been a lot of peripheral things that have been missed in the process and we've seen some very interesting companies there too. It's very hard to pick only one. Um, but if I had to pick one, I would say that um, energy storage um, is absolutely going to be a key area over the next five years. Um, utility scale, renewable generation, renewable power generation is an intermittent resource for the most part when you're talking about wind and solar and creating a storage mechanism to basically take a renewable asset and make it look like a um, conventional fossil fuel based asset in terms of its base load capacity is really you know, a, a hole in the value chain today that needs to be solved and if, if it is solved um, it will create a very different dynamic related to the renewable energy market and so I think um, energy storage would be probably my number one. I'm with uh, Chuck, who's one was one of the keynote speakers here. I I'm very excited about energy efficiency. I think uh, here in Australia it's difficult because our energy is so cheap. It's difficult for it to get the attention um, of energy users. But there is massive opportunity um, once it is. Uh, <laughs> Look, I think solar is going to get very large. I think the, the, the drops in the module prices that are coming through, um, it's yet to be seen what happens this year, but last year was a 30% drop. It's on a trajectory of cost that no other technology is on, from my opinion. Um, that coupled with storage is, is a logical thing that's going to be quite a big market. Um, and the other one is solar PV because of the you know, uh, global support now in terms of uh, policy for PV, but also the very rapid production in, um, in unit prices for PV panels and so forth. So I think uh, at a rooftop sort of distributed energy level, um, it's really, it's, well it is taking off and I think it will continue to do that for a few years yet. My view would be less sectoral specific and more around the key issue that clean tech has to get over. And that's this big capital hump for investments that you hit when you've got your technology and you've got to demonstrate it in a commercial application. So those funds that can focus on that first project and enough equity in the company to fund those first demonstration projects, they're going to see a hell of a lot of good quality deal flow. Um, but the tip for early stage companies, I think, from my point of view, is don't necessarily take off the five-year R&D plan, find some low-hanging fruit, a revenue line that you can enter the market in in the first 12 months on a systems integration, and then do your high-value R&D on the back of that, because the money is tight still at the moment.